Chusom Bedu, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Hi, Trevor. How are you? I am fantastic because I'm speaking to somebody who is not just from my home country, but somebody who has also moved to America and is making a name for themselves. I'm less happy for your success and more happy that I have somebody to share South African stories with and eat South African food. That's, that's really what I'm excited about. But um, congratulations, first of all, on not just making it into the industry, but making it in such a big way. What has that journey been like? And please tell me, how on earth did this happen for you? Yo, I don't even know where to start. Um, but I heard of the Underground Railroad in November 2018. I was in New York for the International Emmy Awards. And I did like um, the first audition then. And I sort of just forgot about it because I didn't think anything of it. I was like, this is my first international audition. I don't even have the accent, right? It's just like, go there, do your best. And then I came to LA in top of 2019. And then I was able to make it into a room with Francine Maisler, who is the casting director for Underground Railroad. And then at the end of that night, I got a call from my manager telling me that it was a, a callback and that Barry wanted to meet me the next day. Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins. And I'm like, wait a minute. First of all, call back how when I don't, I didn't even know. I wasn't, I was like emotionally, mentally, you know, like just, yeah. And so I met Barry the next day. At the end of it, he actually looked at me and he said, you are the character. I'm not saying you got the role, but wow. is, you know, and then in those two weeks between meeting Barry and the test shoot, I read the book like twice in preparation for that. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this, but I don't know if I have it in me to serve the character as authentically as she needs to be served, but mm -hmm. I'll just do my best. And then the rest is up to Barry. So what makes the story so, so, so difficult to tell is you're talking about one of the most painful periods in American history, and that is slavery. When you're playing this character, it, it must have felt strange and yet familiar to be an African woman playing a story about Africans who are displaced and put into America. What, what was that journey like for you in building and creating that character? So for me, most importantly, I realized very early on that I had a lot of unlearning to do in order to learn the truth. And the sense that what I knew about the enslaved body in America was shaped by media and a very white male gaze. So that serves a particular agenda. So I had to throw all of that away and completely, you know, be open to new information. Barry sent me stuff to read. He sent me audio tapes to listen to audio tapes of former enslaved people. Wow. And it's when I heard them, like the sound and how they spoke, that something in me really shifted. Cause here I was listening to people who are up 75 years old, you know, 90 years old, but they sound 16. And the English that they speak is broken. And it made sense cause they were being taught English for instruction and not English for conversation. Right, and what right, really right. struck me is that the, the broken English that they spoke is the, in English that if you went to South Africa today or parts of Africa, that's how people in the rural areas or in the townships speak today. So right. when, when that hit, it stopped being an African-American story and became a story about Africans in America. And so it hit much closer to home for me. What was the hardest thing for you to do in, in, in playing the character and trying to tell that story as authentically as possible? You know, man, I think the hardest thing to do was actually outside the world of the character, which was keeping a balance and, you know, being aware of who Tuso is and who the character was. Because it's very easy to take on what the character is feeling and have it bleed into your everyday life, especially Ooh, yeah. because what's happening in the story is still very relevant to what is happening today, mm -hmm. you know? And the character is shaped by this huge sense of loss, rejection, abandonment. And she kind of has to fight to, to get that what she wants, which is ultimately her freedom. And, you know, being a black woman, being a black body in the world today, I'm not even going to say just America, those are the same type of struggles that we see. You know, it's just, it happens to be in a different time. So I had to be very, very self-aware. Oh, good scene. Mm -mm. Babes, when you're feeling this way, that's the residue of the character and not wow. just... Yeah, but otherwise on set, I always felt protected. I completely trusted Barry. When he pushed me, I knew it's because he knew I was capable of doing it. Mm. 
you are now pushing yourself um, to explore new horizons in the US. I mean, you are already lining up projects and one of the most exciting that we've seen is that you are going to be teaming up with none other than Viola Davis herself. Tell me a little bit about, uh, about that and um, how, how that came about and what you're gonna be doing in that. In the very first audition, I was already working with the director, Gina Prince by the Wood. She was, you know, it was a whole working session stretching me. But then she did something to me. She said, at the end of it, she says, good luck. And I said, no, you can't say good luck. Because now imagine going to an interview and then they say good luck with all your other interviews. It means that there's <laughs> no hope for me in the, I was like, but I want you to be my good luck. We must work right, together, right, right. you know? Yeah, and then I think a few days later we had a meeting and I got a, a chance to meet Ooh, Viola and I absolutely loved it because from the interviews I've seen of her, her process is my process and I was like, I'm going to learn a lot from her if I get to work with her. And then eventually we were able to do the test shoot and then ta-da, we're shooting it in South Africa. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Oh, well, they, they, you, I feel like you've achieved the ultimate goal. You come to America, you make it in America, and then you find a way to make the American production go shoot in South Africa. And look at that. You've just got a free round trip. Congratulations. Um, Tusom Bedu, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Congratulations on all of your success. And I cannot wait to watch the full series of the Underground Railroad and everything else you're going to be doing. Thank you. Bye.